Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, folks, I got my bro in here with me today. Uh, we're going to talk about the Kentucky game that's coming up. We're also going to talk about Cedric Tillman and his injury, whether or not he's going to be available. We're also going to talk about those uniforms, those blacked out uniforms. I think they're going to be fun. So, uh, like I say, this is my brother, Wilmot. Yeah, yeah. Now, I do have two brothers. I've got this one right here, and then, of course, my other brother, Daryl. I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl. That's my other brother, Daryl. <laughs> Okay, now actually his name's Chilmont and my other brother is Junebug. And uh, <laughs> they both went to the Alabama game and had a big time. Let's, uh, ta let's take a minute about the Alabama game, uh, Wilmot, and talk about uh, what that was like. That was fantastic. That's one of the best games I've ever been to. I was actually at the game in, in 1982. That was my freshman year in college. And that was Bear Bryant's final year coaching for Alabama. And that was a, a huge win. Uh, they dragged the... Oh, crap. Was Bear Bryant there? Bear Bryant. That was... Oh, my last... gosh. I remember him being down there with that yes. um, houndstooth hat. Yes. Yes, I, I remember that. I was in high school, wasn't I? I was he, a sophomore. He retired not long about long after that, and then subsequently he died after. Yeah, he didn't last very long, did yeah, he? Yeah, less than a year. After he might have he been ill. He might have known he was ill. He probably did, but uh, that that kind of pushed him out. When they, I do remember seeing him down there. He was almost like kind of menacing looking down there with that hat. Oh yeah, he was intimidating down there because he was <laughs> a stone face on the field, and he was good at his job. You got to admit it. Yeah, he, he won a bunch of. He might have been the very first emperor of Palpatine. I think he actually was the first Emperor of Palpatine. <laughs> and Saban took his place. Yeah, y'all Saban has done a good job. Yeah, he has. Look, now, Chilmont, I know you were at the uh, celebration afterwards, and uh, we actually, where they actually uh, tore down the goalpost, and we got a little video of that um, that Wilmot took, and we're going to show you that right now. It was it was absolutely fantastic. It was a great moment, a great moment in Vol history. And the it, the thing that was so crazy about it is immediately after he made the kick, within like thirty seconds, there was ten thousand people on the field, and in another thirty seconds, it was entirely covered with people. It was just incredible. And the the noise level that night going to bed, I, I, my ears were ringing. I was laying in bed and said, "What is that noise?" And it was my ears ringing from how loud it was during that game. It was incredible. Is it the loudest that you've ever heard it? I think so. Uh, the Georgia game one year, uh, I think it was almost as loud, but I think this was louder because a lot of times I actually had to plug my ears. I just held my fingers in my ears during a lot of plays, fourth down plays, third down plays. I mean, it was nuts. And we were under one of the overhangs, so it made it even worse. Now, Wilmot played high school football at Greenville High School. How much would that noise have affected you playing football? I would have literally knocked somebody's head off uh, with that kind of crowd and that kind of noise. Oh, it would have got you that fired up. Oh, now, yeah. how would it have affected you had you been on the opposite side of it? Well, you can't you can't make calls at the offensive line. I think that's one of the reasons they had so many uh, uh, false start penalties gotcha. during the game. Part of the reason they had so many penalties, period, was that you have to move. You can't yell out. Omaha, Omaha, you got to use hand signals. You got to get people's attention and, you know, make a hand signal because you literally cannot hear anything. It is, it is so loud. I think they measured, measured it. It was something like 125 decibels. Yeah, it was, it was the loudest I think it's ever which been. Which is like a rocket engine. Yep. So. Now you played defensive line. How much would that have affected you on the defensive line? Would it have been not as big an issue? Not as much on, uh, cause you call the play uh, or whatever coverage you're going to go into before you start the, the actual play. And so everybody on defense. Now, what if you needed to change that play? If you needed to change that play, you you, you just can't. Yeah, if you're not looking at uh, at the usually the head linebacker who is actually calling the defenses, and if you can't hear him, that's your SOL. <laughs> you I got you. Okay. So we did want to talk about that and show you that little bit of video. All right, now folks, we're going to be playing Kentucky at seven o'clock uh, Saturday night, and that's a great um, advantage to us. Playing at 7 o'clock, I mean, everybody's going to be in a very festive and excited mood, to say the least. You picked up some bootleg liquor. Where did you get 
the liquor. Where did you get the liquor? I, now, I'm not suggesting that uh, people might be a little bit intoxicated. So I think they're going to be very excited. And as you can see, when, uh, when the Vols start doing this kind of stuff, <laughs> it gets a little bit crazy for the opposite team. Yeah. So they know this type of thing. Granted, we're not going to tear down the goalpost over beating Kentucky, but this is going to be a crazy crowd, and they're going to be super excited. And that's going to make it real tough on Kentucky. And because again, they're going to be extremely loud too. It's, oh yeah, it's I think it'll nice. be almost as loud as Bama. I think it will be. Yes, yeah. because this game is hugely important. We'll be eight and oh. I mean, yeah, before yeah, it's this monstrous. Started, I said, John, I think we can be eight and oh. You just said you're nuts. Oh yeah, I wouldn't have. I, I had us five and two after the first seven in games, and then I had us uh, nine and three by the end of the season, and we've already won seven games. So I'm kind of in shock. We're already bowl eligible. We're already bowl eligible, by the way, with those with that seventh win. Well, sixth win got sixth got us win, there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But uh, let's go into this Kentucky game. All right, now Kentucky's definitely going to try to run the ball on us. They did last year, and they were very successful at it. As a matter of fact, they were super successful at it. Uh, they ran and threw all over us, and they had the ball for something like forty-seven minutes, and I think we had it for thirteen. <laughs> so I mean, it was it was unreal. They slowed the game down dramatically, and of course we. We were scoring at will. It was just wild how that game played out. And it was close. Yeah, oh gosh, yeah. They could have won at the last minute. Yeah. That was the only close game we won last year. Yeah. We had four close games. We only won one. This year we won them all. So, you know, this is a different uh, team uh, dynamic for sure and a different culture. But let's take a look at Kentucky stats uh, this year because it is quite a bit different. Their total offense is 373 yards, and I think that's less than last year. And the big part of it is the rushing and if you go down here and you look at their rushing average, let me see where their rushing average is. Uh, they're averaging uh, 3.1 yards per rush. And last year, I think it was over four. I think they were close to five yards per uh, game. Perfect. Okay. If you'll look right here, yeah. folks, 5.3 yards um, average rushing. And this year, they're 3.1. And they've got the same running back. So the big difference there is the offensive line. They've also given up quite a few more sacks as well. But as you can see, um, that's a huge difference. I mean, 2.2 yards difference is monstrous. Yeah, per play, that's a, that's per run, that's yep. actually a very big difference. Yeah, 425 yards is what they averaged. And this year they're at 373 yards, so 50, 60 yards less per game. And But they say the big deal is the 3.1 yards versus over five. That's just a huge difference. And that has everything to do with their O-line. They had three starters that um, – Ran out of eligibility. I think some of them are in the NFL now. Yeah. So, you know, they, they were great blockers last year. I mean, I'm telling you, they ran all over us. They ran all over everybody last year. And that changes the game dramatically. So, yeah, they're going to be able to pass on us. And that's the same thing that's happening all year is if you can't rush the ball because our defense is allowing something like 2.9 yards per rush, and that's strong. Which that's a, really strong. That's an unbelievable stat going from last year to this year because – it's pretty much the same line it was last year, and they're, but they are so much more effective against the run. It's because they're getting coached up, and that's, that's another thing that's getting uh, Heupel and this staff a lot of national attention is it's obvious that uh, players are getting coached up with this staff. Yeah, absolutely on that. All right, now this guy, Rodriguez, is a heck of a player. He is a bruiser brawler, about 240 pounds. He's got a real bad attitude, which makes him an excellent running back, especially at that size. But And he's averaging over five yards per carry, and he's only played in three games so far this year. He was suspended. Uh, we don't know why, something to do with team rules, but um, something he wasn't getting along with the coach about. But no. anyway, um, this guy is going to be a key dude. And our defensive line has been – have been stopping guys like this. So if we stop him, that's going to make it tough on Kentucky, and that'll make Will Levitt's very one-dimensional. That'll make Kentucky very one-dimensional. And uh, Will is, you know, he's a fine quarterback. Yeah, oh, Will Levitt's here. Now, he's a bit of a runner. He'll try to run, but he's not a great runner. But he is a fine passer of the ball. But he can get a little bit loose with it if you put pressure on him. And I think we're going to chase him all over the field uh, Saturday night. And the crowd's going to make is going to make it very difficult on him to change plays, so it's going to be something else. Well, if we can get pressure on him like we did Bryce Young, although Bryce Young is way more elusive uh, than uh, this quarterback will be, uh, I think we can make him make some mistakes in the game, and and I think turnovers could be a huge uh, part of this game. 
Yeah, yeah. I think he's going to struggle some. He's going to have some success, but I he see will. him making a mistake or two because he's going to try to take over the game because that's that's his nature. He's one of those guys that will try to put the entire team on his shoulders, which is not a good idea to do, not in this environment. So if he makes a mistake or two, that crowd's going to get heavily involved, and then oh, it yeah. could get real ugly. Yep. So, you know, it's going to be up to him whether they stay in this game or not. And like I say, last year he played a fan, probably the best game of his life, really, like 375 yards I think he had. Yeah, and I think he, game I year. think he'll pass for 300. I absolutely he, do. He probably will. They'll, they'll put up points on us. I mean, they're, they're a good offense. And – I think if our defensive backfield could just get some stops, maybe a turnover or two, I think that would be the difference in the game. And, and we can hopefully easily win, but certainly win the game at, uh, toward the end. Yeah, these two guys, um, Levitz and Rodriguez, they've made it pretty clear they are not afraid of the Vols. You will be. You will be. That's right. They will be. Yeah. After Saturday night, they will be. <laughs> yeah. They haven't played our off against an offense like ours, and they certainly haven't played in an environment like it's going to be Saturday night. Yeah, that was at um, – at uh, what's uh, what do they call that field up there? Is it Food City uh, Field or Food Line, or is it Kroger? Um, Ingles, is it? No, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those food chains, um, stadiums up there that uh, – Anyway, that was up there, and they were all in blue and white. Man, they were going crazy. Well, now they're going to be playing up against it. That was a great win last year by the Vols. That was a really yeah. important win, too. Very. Okay, now we've got one big question. Is Cedric Tillman going to play in this game? I personally think he will. Now let's take a look at uh, what the uh, coach has been saying about it. Yeah, will Cedric Tillman return? said, we will continue to evaluate here as he goes through and practices this week. I'm, you know, man, I'm thinking he's going to play. That extra two weeks had to be huge. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, I, and I, but I don't think Hypo is going to give anything away, which he should not get, give anything away. He should make Kentucky guess the whole way. And I think that's what this article is going to say. Yeah, yeah. It says, um, of course, it talked about how he got hurt against Akron. I hadn't forgot about you, Akron, you pieces of crap. Dirty hitting. Ugh, I, I need to just calm down because yeah. if I start talking about Akron and how they tried to take out Hendon Hooker's knees, I'll get real angry and I won't be able to turn back. Yeah, that was sickening. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, you know, we had that uh, special surgery on his ankle, and man, I'm telling you what, he's probably going to play in this game. And if he does, I, I don't know what Kentucky's going to do because you'll have Hyatt on one side, Tillman on the other. You got to double team them. You can't double team both of them, and then you're going to have uh, Brew McCoy, who is an absolute beast out there. Yeah, we'll we'll have three of the best receivers. In the Absolutely. Country, yeah, then right. you got Keaton, and you've got um, God. We are just loaded for bear, uh, and we got Fant. Fant is just turning into a man. What's he going to do next? He's going to start coaching too. I swear, he's I mean, done he threw everything. a touchdown pass. Yeah, and he's he's a running back now, and he's a tight end. I, what's left? Is he going to kick a field goal? Yeah, that kid needs to see the ball a lot more. Man, he's talented, dude. So we, we're thinking he, that Tillman's going to play. And it's hard to say whether he will or not, but I think if, if he's healthy at all, this is a game he would definitely be dying to play in, and I'd be surprised if we didn't see him at some point. Yeah, if he's in there, I think Kentucky's going to – I don't know what they're going to do, really. I mean, this guy requires two defensive players to stop him. If they go one-on-one -on -one with him, you're going to see a lot of passes down the sideline. And he'll probably back shoulder pass him. He'll let him go up on the 50-50 ball. And this dude is a freak athlete. And, you know, he's not going to play if he's not 100%, but he might very well be 100%. And he's going to be <laughs> itching to get out there. If he gets out there, what do you do? Uh, it's Now you can't focus on Hyatt. Now you got uh, now you got to cover both. And then Brew McCoy's open. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not pretty for a defense. I would hate to try to go up against that. It's really a, a two-headed monster, three-headed uh, monster, really. Yeah, that's when they will be afraid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> All right, folks. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the blacked-out uniforms. I'm pretty excited about this. I know there are some traditionalists that don't care for it. I love it. I love the different uniform looks. I think it's great for recruiting. I think the players enjoy it, and it gets them excited. And this is the look that you'll see Saturday night, and especially around Halloween. But I really like the blackout look. I think that's pretty cool. It will actually be a black helmet, too, with uh, – with, they're breaking those out. Oh, they're really? Black new. helmet with it's that, with the black, orange stripes? With the orange stripe and the orange T. So it's going to be totally a uh, total blackout for Halloween, and uh, I think it is going to be fantastic. Everybody's going to love it.
Yeah, that's that's exciting. So you're going to have that on top of the fact that it's 7 o'clock. So, yeah, I think this is going to give uh, certainly the players, because I know they really like them, this is going to give them a little extra energy for this, a little extra excitement for all the fans, and it's going to be tough on Kentucky. Chilmont, are you suggesting that there's there might be some power in this dark uniform? I think there may be. We may have gone over to the dark side. You don't know the power of the dark side. Yep, yep. There's a lot of power in those uniforms, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> so this is going to be a very exciting game. And uh, 7 o'clock, I just love that. Yep. Uh, I'm, it means I get to watch the game, so I won't be at work. And there's so, going to be a long time to tailgate, which is oh my gosh. Be great. Yep, yep. Junebug will be there at 6 a.m. He gets yep. there. He gets there at dark. He and his gets wife. Gets there at dark. They, they're nuts. Yeah, I, I've never seen anybody that gets to tailgating in the dark. I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter. 7 o'clock game, he's there at, at 6 a.m. Every time, if it's a 12 o'clock game, he gets there at even earlier. Yeah, 12 hours of tailgating. That's no yep. big deal for them. <laughs> no, it's not. They put up the tent. They got the TVs. They got the food, the uh, grill, everything. I mean, they make yeah. an absolute big deal out of it they are professional tailgaters so there's yep. amateurs and they're pros yep he's the one that had the uh, the uh, worst case of uh, battered vol syndrome in the oh, history yeah. of, of football and he is really <laughs> doing a whole lot better now he's turned the corner i think he's uh he's on the road to recovery at this point uh which is really good uh he is just like everybody else who's a Vol fan is ecstatic about how this this season has gone. He's usually so negative because oh, he, he hates to get up about the game because if when they lose, it it's just so, kills him. Yeah, it's so oh, it just destroys him. So, you know, I named him Lydia. I hate the guitar. <laughs> I don't mind the clarinet or the saxophone, but I hate the guitar. <laughs> yeah, I named him Lydia because he was so negative. But I tell you what, if, if things keep going the way they're going, I may not be able to keep calling him Lydia because he seems to be a lot more positive than he was about a month ago when we were going into Alabama. He's like, "No way, no way." I said, "I'm telling you, June Bug, we got a chance. Don't don't think that we can't win this game." And they put 52 on Bama, and no, and the unreal. nice thing was the Bama fans didn't seem to mind at all. <laughs> <laughs> If you didn't see, I'll attach my video of the Bama fan reactions if you haven't seen that video. And I show three YouTubers that are huge Bama fans and all their reactions. It's hilarious. Oh, I know. It, uh, there's nothing sweeter on, in this world than Bama tears. <laughs> oh, yeah. That. Oh, man. They're just so fired. <laughs> <laughs> they're so upset. Uh, all right, folks. Well, like I said, I wanted to cover those three issues uh, today. And like I said, big game coming up. I did want to bring my bro in here, uh, Chilmont, and let him... Uh, Give us a, a few of his uh, insights from being at the game, especially the Bama game. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, no problem. And uh, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover the Vols. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. Uh, I've only been doing this about three months. I could use some subscribers. I sure could. Click have you button. Have you subscribed yet? I've subscribed twice. Oh, there you, oh, that's great. Hey, yeah. man, what? <laughs> I could tell a joke about voting right I know, now. I know. I'm not going to do it, though. I don't want to get into <laughs> politics. No, don't do that. Don't do All that. right, folks, we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.